All right, folks, here in a good old Cracker Barrel. Let me get my menu. I think I'm going after them sawmill, them biscuits and gravy, gravy on the taters. Or I may have to tear up one of them big breakfasts. Love it here. My goodness. That's so delicious, folks. I'm telling you right now. I love the Cracker Barrel. Folks, what a great meal at the Cracker Barrel. How can you not love this old country store? I gotta pay the bill here. There's a handful of people here. Not too many people, but you know, probably half a dozen even. It's a Wednesday morning. It's not like a weekend day. It's cool just walking around. You see the Cracker Barrel all the time. Great meal. Shout out to the folks here. Doing a great job. My goodness, Whew, ate so much. I just probably gained a kilo, two pounds. My goodness, but it was worth it. That meal was worth it, folks. Again, shout out to the folks working here at the Cracker Barrel. That cook was on time. Everybody friendly? You look around the parking lot. That's eh, probably, ah, eh, probably six. Six tables of folks sitting in there eating. You know, wait staff, everybody is uh, is wearing masks, but you don't have to wear a mask. This is the state of Georgia. People got fucking common sense and are not believing this goddamn coronavirus shit no more because the date is in. The date has been in. This is all a fucking hoax and it's all horse shit. So I'm glad. I'm goddamn glad I'm in Georgia right now, my friends. Alright, so I go into this just take I, I go into this uh, government building this morning and very friendly people, but there's a note hanging on the door and the, the gentleman's the security says, Sir, can you please read that? You know, respond to the question. So it says, you know, if you had fever, um, you know, if you've been, recently been in close contact with somebody with COVID-19, blah blah blah. The last thing it says is have you been in any known area in the past 14 days? Uh, an area known for having uh, COVID-19, you know, patients, people testing positive for COVID-19. And I wanted to fucking be a smart ass and say, yeah, motherfucker, I, I, I certainly have. I'm on fucking planet Earth. Oh, yeah, I'm in the fucking United States. There's fucking coronavirus cases everywhere. Kind of, it's a trick question, right? What, what are you going to say? No, I'm like, no, no, you know, no. Back of my mind, I'm like, motherfucker, there's, this shit's everywhere. Who cares? Have you been in an, an area, something like with known, known, you know, I don't know what it said, known cases of COVID-19? Yeah, it's called a fucking United States of America, planet Earth. Let's get over, get on with it. Let me in the fucking door. Oh my goodness. Now I'm a Ted's, about to eat a bison burger. And I'm drinking a, a Ted's IPA. And folks, if you come to Ted's, the IPA, the Ted's IPA is great. Me two pina coladas, one for each hand. Let's sit sail with Captain Morgan. Folks had a great meal over at Ted's. Get that bison burger, pepper jack cheese, onion rings with some horseradish. I probably gained two, three pounds. I mean, welcome to America. That's why I know everybody in America is so goddamn fat because the food is readily available. Plenty of it. My God. I got to slow my roll, folks. Basically, no excuse for you being late picking me up at the airport. No excuse. <laughs> I'm just messing with the folks. Thank you for picking me up there, Kim. You're Appreciate welcome. that. All right, folks, just nice, beautiful 
ride through the countryside. It's a windy day, it's nice and cool, a little overcast. Probably some rain about to come down in a little bit, if I had to guess. This thing got some get up and go. Whoa, watch that UPS man. My goodness. UPS man rolling strong through the country. You might be a redneck if you got about four or five abandoned trailers <laughs> on your property. Mm -hmm. You realize we just passed about five trailers? Not abandoned. Yeah, yeah, no. Ain't not one of them got a, buy a new one. They all got expired tags on there. You gotta bring a suburban uh, down here. They want more, isn't it? Well, y'all hang on. We gotta get them. Right. Yeah. Watch it. There's a 2x4 in the middle of the road, man. This is where we target, target practice. Uh, a brand new chainsaw. Uh, we may have to do a demonstration on how to, how to operate a chainsaw yeah. after you've had three beers. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna roll by an old spot of mine. Believe it or not, I used to own this place. They used to call it the Chateau de Moi, which means my castle in French. For any of you out there who don't speak French, which there might be a few. Uh, you still got the old uh, concrete pillar up there. Now, folks, this is sad for me because this used to be my pasture here. Yeah. Now it looks like a uh, forest. I mean, maybe that's what the guy wants, but uh, that used to be a pasture. That's where it kept the horses and... Uh... Now, folks, you can't even see down on the old place, but you used to be able to see all the way back there. And when you came down that road, there was you know pasture not well pasture on the right side you'd see horses you can, there's a cabin in the back you come down through there, there's horses there's a little red barn beautiful place and uh whoever the fuck's got it now i, I hate to see that you know a little rabbit right there Is that our rabbit It'd be good eating get that joker in the damn crock pot folks ain't no windshield quick look at the engine it's, it's a, a rear mount supposed to be a uh, subaru motor made by subaru what they say. and folks this this thing rides smooth now look i ain't rode these things in a long time so they've obviously uh improved but like if, if i had to compare this to a uh a mule or a gator or what have you what you got here storage now this is what it Radiator, radiator. Oh, it's got a radiator. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So you got a you got the radiator up here. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. But yeah, so if I had to compare them, folks, this this thing rides the smoothest out of any uh, any of these type of vehicles I've ever rode in. So. Uh, It'll go 45 miles an hour. 45. Yeah. Four wheel drive, positive traction. All right, so so it is posi track, yep. four wheel drive posi track, yep. and they got a windshield for it. But uh, you know, out. yeah, it took it out. It's better in the summer, good weather. To uh, and that thing just all you gotta do is pop that down. That's pretty easy. And that that bed will dump. That's a good thing too. Yep. And you got a got a full hitch. size hitch, yep. hefty hitch in the back. There you go, folks. Could boat a four wheel drive. Folks, yeah. Coming with a bush. Hey, it's time to head for the mountains. We got Yingling, Corona in the back. What's this down here, man? Oh, that's white stuff. Now I'm going for the bush. Head for bush beer. Shout out to my man. Hold on, let me lay him out here. Shout out to my man, Rick Flair, who turned me on to this uh, game blue cigars. Picked up several cognac. What's this one here? I'm not sure. Natural sweet aromatic. I don't know. The only one I've had is the vanilla. That's a game blue cognac. I'm gonna tell you right now, the smell on that cigar is outstanding. Outstanding. And let me show you when I pop the top on that bush and head for the mountain. My goodness. 
Oh yeah. Now we're gonna see if this taste has changed because Budweiser has screwed me on Bud Light. They changed my Bud Light. I'm no longer a Bud Light man. So let me let me see what I can do here, folks, with this with this bush. We're gonna head for the mountain. Man, I'm almost thinking they changed the bush too. Yeah. That's not the same, Budweiser. That's not the same. That taste is the same as Bud Light. Been imprinted in my brain since I was a young man. That's not bush. That's not the bush I know. I think you could pull it on the people here that drink it on a daily basis because they, they slowly wouldn't know the change. But this dog right here ain't been town and ain't been in town in over eight years, coming up on a decade. That is not the same taste. Nowhere near. It's just not. I'm done with Budweiser folks. You just let me down, Budweiser. You must have done it across the board. It's a cost-cutting measure. I understand you got to compete with these skinny jean-wearing idiots drinking all the craft beer, but that is not Bush as I know it. It's just not. That's like piss water. Bud Light's like piss water. This is like piss water. Used to when you drank a Bush, a Bush. It had like a twang to it. It had a twang aftertaste. You knew when you got a hold of a bush, there was no mistake in a bush beer. It's like Jack Daniels. You could not imitate Jack Daniels and you could not imitate a bush beer. Not hitting any, any, any of my receptors to say, this is familiar. The last night I was in Chicago, Illinois and I went to a pizza place. Now, I've ate pizza various places around the globe over the, you know, the past decade. I've had good pizza and bad pizza. But last night when I've been into that pizza up in Chicago, that was familiar. That was right on time. It was the exact taste, exactly as I remember eating pizza in Chicago fucking 20 years ago. My taste receptors you could blindfold me and I bite that pizza and it would remind me, okay, this number one, I'm in America, and number two, maybe Chicago. There ain't nothing in my taste receptor's memory that says that's a bush beer. Nope. Coca-Cola made a big mistake when they tried to change Coke's formula. And you're I, I, you made some big mistakes, Budweiser changing up my beer that's a, that's a jumbo right there my Mine's friends got a cactus. look at them how you're going with a small i'm going with a jumbo yeah. folks i'm just saying it's crazy for the first time in years white cheese sauce good. little side of jalapenos let's see what we can do with this folks this one has fun thank you Mm. Oh, mm. my goodness when I go back to Southeast Asia my suitcase is gonna have 50 kilos of jalapenos I promise you
Problem with the, with the pool pump. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that thing start start right up. state for that matter but you know when you know, even though I lived out of state I, you know I, I would still come see my dad all the time wasn't no big deal living in the states but you know living on the other side of the world when you're living on a shoestring budget you know sixteen hundred dollar round tip uh, round trip plane ticket you know a two thousand dollar trip that takes a lot out of you 
so you, you're not obviously gonna, you're not going to make those trips very long if you're over there living in the Philippines or Thailand on your your small pension. I say small. I mean, just most guys have a small pension. That's why I say the word small. Um, so you can you can live over there cheap, but when you have to take those trips back home, you know it takes a big lick out of you. So I've had a great time hanging out with my dad going around here on the farm careful man <laughs> that little thing it's actually a pretty good go-kart it's made by coleman i think they got it at tractor supply but i, I was driving i said man just let me jump in with you and he said nah hell i'll drive that one so you know i love my old man i mean i love him, my parents come on but me and my old man have a lot of good times together. We always have. Been a great father to me. And, you know, he's around 70 years old, but still young at heart. And, I'm, you know, I'm very thankful for that and blessed that, uh, that, that you know, he's still in good health and active, and, and we can still get out and do everything from go to Nashville and listen to listen to music and look at women and drink jack and coke smoke cigars and listen to live music to hang out here on the farm so anyhow folks it's been really good you know being here and uh and being able to spend time with family eat the bark off that oak tree Thinking about y'all.